Hello everyone, my name is Preston Dennett and welcome to a new episode of UFOs and the Paranormal. I call this episode an alien implant. This is the true story of a single mother and her teenage son who found out that they are UFO contactees. It's a very unusual story with what appears to be hard physical proof of an alien implant. And it's got some very interesting details, and this is why I wanted to present this case to you today. I called the mother, Nancy, and the son, Anthony. This is not their real names. They prefer to remain anonymous. They come from a small town in Indiana, which again, they do not want named. They're very private about this. They just want to live normal lives. Uh, but their story begins really on March 1st, 2012, when Nancy took Anthony to the dentist. At the time, Anthony was 14 years old. And this was just a normal checkup, cleaning, and x-rays. And everything went fine. As far as they knew, nothing abnormal happened. They went home, and next year they went to the dentist, had just a cleaning and a checkup, as they do each year. Next year after that, another cleaning and checkup. But it wasn't until three years later, on August 11th, 2015, that they were scheduled to have x-rays again. And this is when they found something very unusual. Anthony sat in the dental chair, went, had his cleaning, had the checkup, and x-rays were taken. And as the x-rays were being examined by the dentist, uh, he became very concerned. And he called over another dentist, and then another, and soon all seven dentists in the clinic were looking at these x-rays with obvious concern. Meanwhile, Nancy's sitting in the waiting room, and she can see into the office because there's a window, and she motions to her son, Anthony, what is going on? Anthony shrugs. He doesn't know. At this point, he hasn't seen the x-rays. But then the dentists call Nancy into the office itself, and they ask Anthony and Nancy, has Anthony ever shot himself in the mouth with the BB gun? And of course, they both deny it, and they show them the x-rays that they had taken, which show the presence of what appears to be a BB-like object underneath one of Anthony's molars on the left bottom side. And they told Nancy, we found something in your son's mouth. It's underneath the tooth. It looks like a BB, but we don't see any imperfections. There's no scarring, no evidence of any entry wound. We have no explanation for what it is. Anthony and Nancy denied ever sh having, you know, had a BB gun in the house. Anthony never got shot in the mouth. Uh, this simply did not happen. And there was no entry wound. The tooth was asymptomatic. There was no pain. It was functioning normal. It was fine. And these x-rays showed what clearly is an unusual metallic object. Uh, they know the x-ray machines were working fine because other x-rays taken that day did not show anything like this. So this caused a lot of concern among the dentists and they wanted to know what this object could possibly be. And Nancy joked, well, it must be an alien implant. She was just joking. But the dentists were very serious about this and puzzled. Nancy requested copies of the x-rays, which they gave to her, and she went home and began to do research. And the first thing she did was call the dentist who had taken x-rays three years earlier. It was a different dentist in the same clinic. And she went and met with him and looked at the x-rays, and sure enough, there was the same sort of round foreign body in Anthony's mouth. So this had been there for three years. Uh, so she started doing more research on the internet, trying to find out what this could possibly be. And there was no information out there, and everything she looked into kept coming back to the possibility that this might be an alien implant. 
And that's when she contacted me and asked me to help her uh, figure out what this thing could be that was in her son's mouth. She sent me the x-rays. And my first course of action was to, of course, interview both of them to see if there was any history of UFOs. And as far as Nancy knew, no, there wasn't. They had no history of UFOs. But as she questioned Anthony, he did admit that he was dreaming about human-looking Nordic ETs. And further questioning revealed that he had, in fact, had a UFO sighting. This was quite shocking to her. She wasn't aware of this. And uh, Anthony admitted that it was uh, somewhere, somewhere around age 14, before this first x-ray was taken, that he was walking outside their home in Indiana with his friend, and they saw a UFO, blue and yellow lights hovering overhead, which suddenly dropped down and started flashing colored lights at them. As Anthony says... It dropped a little and it went down. It's what it did afterwards. This is how I know it was a UFO because all of a sudden the colors started going crazy. Then it went back up and boom, it was gone. This was apparently a close encounter. Anthony is not sure if he had missing time or not. There's no clear indication of it. But this is definitely a connection probably to... <laughs> this apparent alien implant, because this is when it first appeared. And further questioning revealed that not only was Anthony having UFO dreams, Nancy had as well. And she said that when Anthony was only three years old, she had a very unusual dream that she saw her son, Anthony, submerged in this small pool of this weird, clear, gelatinous liquid that he was apparently breathing and his eyes looked very different. They looked much larger than normal. They were huge, much like ETs portrayed in the popular media. And in this dream, he had very thin, wispy, white hair. So this was another possible clue that something very strange was going on. So the next year, they went to the dentist again on December 12th, 2016. And this time they were taking x-rays again to see if this implant was still there. And their insurance covered only two x-rays, but something very unusual happened. <laughs> they took the first x-ray, and uh, the dentist knew about this anomaly in Anthony's mouth. And sure enough, the first x-ray showed it. They took another x-ray less than one minute later, about 30 seconds later, and the implant was gone. It was not there in the x-ray. And this was quite baffling. And they took a third x-ray, uh, which they did not charge Nancy for, uh, because they wanted to find out if this implant was in fact gone. But the third x-ray showed that this implant was back in place. This was very puzzling to the dentists. And in fact, one of the dental technicians was so upset she had to leave the office. And uh, this was very, very puzzling to everybody. And as Nancy says, and I quote, there's no explanation for it, the coming and going of this object, where it's at, it being circular and perfect. And uh, this really started to cause her all kinds of concern. And she wasn't sure whether to leave this alone or to pursue it. And as she says, I was thinking of just totally leaving this thing alone, just letting it go and moving on. It is what it is. But there was another part of me that wanted to know. At this point, uh, having interviewed both Anthony and Nancy, my next step was to send these x-rays to medical professionals. I knew an uh, emergency physician who was also a UFO researcher. And in fact, he's quite prominent in the field. He wants to remain anonymous, but he did view the x-rays and comment on them. And his first question, again, was, did Anthony shoot himself in the mouth with a BB gun? Which, of course, he did not. And this uh, doctor did leave a written comment, and as he says, and I quote, 
there is nothing natural about a perfectly spherical metallic density foreign body as shown in the x-rays. And I showed it to another medical professional, a general doctor, and he had the same comment. He said, this is clearly artificial. This is metallic, whatever it is. He's also a UFO researcher. And uh, asked again if Anthony had shot himself in the mouth with a BB gun. And uh, again, I said, no. Nancy completely denies this. As she says, being around any type of BB gun, it just didn't happen. It's as simple as that. And I pointed out to the doctor that, listen, there's no entry wound. The tooth is asymptomatic. And in fact, this object looks quite a bit larger than a BB. So they didn't know what to make of it other than that this was a foreign body. Nancy became more and more obsessed at this point, and she really wanted answers. As she says, and I quote, I always believed there is someone out there. I never really thought about it. After this happened, I can't get it out of my head. It's the most embarrassing thing about it. It's like I have to get to the end of it. It's stuck in my head. There's not a day that goes by I don't think about it. It's like I have to know. Is that insanity? Nancy felt like Richard Dreyfus in Close Encounters. This is how obsessed she was. She wanted answers, and there was no way to get to them. It was clear to her that this was not normal, but she just wanted to know for sure if this was, in fact, an alien implant. And uh, further questioning revealed that she herself did have something unusual. I asked her, you know, did you have any nosebleeds? <laughs> Do you have anything medical unusual about you? Uh, because uh, this is something that we see. If it, a person's child is having experiences, it's likely the parent is or someone in their family is. And uh, this jogged her memory. And it turned out that around age nine or 10, she had a strange object appear on the inner nasal passage, an inch or two in, a strange lump, as she called it. It was about an inch or two up inside of her nasal passage. And as Nancy says, I can't explain it. It's white and bony. It's this thing up my nose. I've had it my whole life. I never gave it a second thought because it's always been there. It's never caused me any harm. This is where the case stood for a little while. And Anthony and Nancy just tried to live a normal life, but Nancy could not let this go. She wanted answers. She was absolutely obsessed about it. And it wasn't long before she got an answer. And it was on May 5th, 2017, when something very unusual had happened. They went to bed as normal. And sometime in the night, Anthony came into her room. He was having trouble sleeping. And this is, of course, something a lot of contactees report. Both Anthony and Nancy uh, like to have a little bit of light on when they sleep, a night light or perhaps the hall light on. On this occasion, they left the hall light on and the door cracked open. And sometime in the middle of the night, Nancy woke up feeling like there was somebody in the room and it took her a while to wake up. She was having trouble waking up and opening her eyes, and she realized that she couldn't move, and she struggled and struggled to open her eyes, and finally she did. And as Nancy says, I was trying so hard. I could see the hallway light shining into my room. I couldn't move. I couldn't move, but I didn't want to move either. I felt something, a weird tingling sensation in my head, in my brain. It didn't hurt, but it was like it was occupied. It was really weird. I was lying there, trying my hardest to open my eyes to see what was next to me, and I looked over to my left, and there were lights, different colored lights in my room. They were blinking, purple, yellow, blue, purple, yellow, blue. So I looked over to see, and it was happening again. And I was like, oh my God. So she closed her eyes and opened them a couple of times. And each time these lights were still there. And she was starting to really freak out. 
and turning over to look at her son, she was amazed to see these short figures, silhouettes mostly, sort of hovering over her son and doing something. And as Nancy says, some things were doing something to Anthony. I don't know what, but I saw it. I didn't understand it. You would think that I would be scared. Somebody, some beings, some things, whatever or whoever were doing something to my son. I wasn't freaked out. I wasn't mad or angry. I can't even explain the feeling. I wasn't feeling violated. All I heard was, it's okay. That's all I kept hearing was, it's okay, it's okay. They weren't here to hurt us, and somehow I knew that. The beings just kept saying over and over again in her head, it's okay, it's okay, it's all right, everything's going to be okay. See? It's okay, it's okay. At this point, Nancy looked over at the doorway to her bedroom and saw a typical gray standing right by the door. And as she says, and I quote, this thing, whatever I saw, it wasn't tall. I would guess about four feet. It had a big head, a skinny body, and then I closed my eyes because I thought, I don't want to see that. It was just real quick. And she looked back over at her son, and she, as she says, I could see these two alien-looking figures. I saw two of them doing things. And she could feel them talking inside her head. And she says, my brain had this feeling. It didn't hurt, but it kind of hurt. And they just kept saying to her, it's okay, it's okay. And she estimates they told her that about 50 times at which point she finally fell asleep. And she woke up the next morning and instantly remembered the events of the previous evening. She froze there and her son looked at her and said, are, are you okay? And she said, yes, actually I'm really good. I'm fine. And he said, are you sure? Because it was clear to him that something was going on. And uh, she said that, yes, I'm actually really good. She says she felt an incredible weight coming off of her shoulders. She felt a real sense of relief, like she had finally gotten some answers as to what was going on with her son. And she told him, don't be afraid, don't get scared, but I think they came. They came to me. And Anthony said, what do you mean? And Nancy explained that this could have been a dream. She didn't think so, but these greys came. And uh, Anthony said, they were doing stuff to you? She said, no, no. They were doing stuff to you, and I was just lying there. And Anthony said, oh, I wonder if my alien implant is still there. And Nancy replied, I don't know. It turned out they were due to go back to the dentist in a couple of months, so they would soon find out. But Nancy still felt this incredible relief. And she says, all the things that I used to feel, all the nervousness, it's okay now. I don't have to worry now. That's all I know. That's what I was told. Everything is okay. I don't understand. But the funny thing is, after all this, I've calmed down. I'm still embarrassed and jittery about thinking of this implant. But it's like they gave me a small taste of an answer, and I'm good with that. Just enough to tell me it's okay, it's all right, you don't have to feel this way anymore. That's what happened. It was real. I felt everything. I saw those lights. There's no doubt in my mind that what I saw was real. I w woke up refreshed in an odd way. It's like I got an answer, just enough of an answer to calm me down. And that's it. In July 2017, they went back to the dentist, and sure enough, the implant was still there. X-rays showed that it was still in the exact same place. At one point, Anthony did get his wisdom teeth removed, and the oral surgeon offered to remove this implant, but Anthony denied it. Uh, this request. He said, no, I don't want it removed. Uh, so 
this is when other interesting things started to happen. Nancy felt the urge to make some big changes in her life. Uh, she was having some problems with uh, being overweight and decided to start eating more healthy, which she did. Uh, and I should mention here that Nancy does have a lot of lucid dreams and is very much sensitive and awake in her dreams quite a bit. And her son, Anthony, is also very psychic and has been from a very young age. As a little boy, he saw spirits. And as he grew up, he would constantly have precognition and clairvoyance. And in fact, it was a daily event. And I think this is significant because this is a pattern that certainly turns up in other cases. And following this visitation, uh, Nancy started to have some recall of other visitations throughout her life. In fact, she remembered that often when she would go to sleep, she would say something like, it's okay to come tonight. And then she would be visited by these greys. She said that uh, this happened several times. It was always the same thing. She would say something like, quote, it's okay if you want to come tonight. And it was just a thought that she would put out there. And uh, sure enough, they would come. She says, that's when they chose to come, these greys, these beings, whatever the heck they are. It's been very, very few, a few major ones and a few small ones. And then in mid-November 2018, uh, Nancy was falling asleep and on impulse she put out the thought, it's okay, it's okay if you want to come tonight. And she says the reaction was almost instantaneous. As she says, I just remember falling asleep and I'm gone. I'm out of my room and I'm on this ship. But it's not a ship. I mean, it is, but it isn't. Nancy, Nancy was surprised to find herself in a room with sort of rounded walls. There was a strange looking door, oval shaped. There were windows. She could see blue sky outside of them. There was a little couch, a love seat, a little chair, a flat screen TV, carpet, and there was a young man sitting on this love seat. She had the feeling that this was actually a craft, but it had been sort of dressed up as a living room to make her feel more comfortable. Uh, as she says, I don't know, but it was like they were trying to simulate a comfortable environment. And uh, she says the man was quite young. She says he had to be about 20. He had brown hair, a normal guy. There was nothing wrong with him. Uh, but interestingly, she and this man began to communicate telepathically. And she says to him, so you're here too. And this young man nods and she says, why are you here? And he shrugged, he didn't know. He says, it'll be okay, it'll be all right. And Nancy nodded. The man stood, got up, and looked out the window. And Nancy had the feeling that it was very much like they were waiting inside a doctor's office. And this is when this door swished open. And boy, did she get a shock when this figure walked in. And it was a very tall praying mantis. As Nancy says, and I quote, I saw this shadow. And then all of a sudden, oh my God, it was so tall, huge. It looked literally just like a praying mantis, except he wasn't green. He had this beetle-like armor, like a shell, really elongated fingers and really big eyes. He wasn't green, he was grayish brown with shades and mixtures. Uh, Nancy felt no fear, she was absolutely calm and uh, as she watched, this praying mantis entered the room and walked straight over to the man, as Nancy says. While this kid was looking out, the mantis then came over and put something on the back of his neck, and I saw exactly what it looked like. It was like a big needle, except it didn't have a point. It had like a sound card, one inch each way. It was really flat, and you could tell it had computer stuff on it and he put it on the back of his neck. That's all he did. It didn't hurt him. 
He just kept looking out the window like it was nothing. And then he turned to me, and I hear these clicking noises. He made these weird clicking sounds. And as this being approached, Nancy was very much impressed by the way it moved with these jerky, bug-like movements. And she says, you know how bugs do that? Especially that weird head movement? It's really quick and twitchy. And this praying mantis held up this little instrument, uh, clearly intending to use it on her. And as Nancy says, I wasn't scared. I stood up, and this is exactly what I said. I said, no, uh uh-uh, no. But it just kept coming, and it kind of backed up a little. It was approaching me with that thing, and then I don't remember anything, and that was that. Nancy woke up, uh, and she was quite surprised. The whole experience was very puzzling to her, especially how the room was dressed up like a living room. I mean, it even had cheap carpet, the sofa, the chair, windows, the flat screen TV. Uh, But she was absolutely convinced that this was, in fact, the interior of a UFO, and she had been taken on board. It was a fully conscious experience. It wasn't like a normal dream at all. She was awake. And, of course, there was this huge praying mantis. And that was really shocking to her. Uh, She told her son Anthony what had happened and began to describe this praying mantis. Anthony was on the computer at the time, and Nancy didn't know it, but Anthony immediately began searching uh, for images of praying mantises and came upon some drawings done by other contactees. And he called his mom over to the computer and showed her these images drawn by other contactees. And Nancy got a real shock because one of these pictures showed exactly what she saw. As she says, there was one picture on there. It was like, oh my God, that's it. That's it right there. It was like right in front of me. Somebody had done a drawing. And not only that, as she read the description of what the contact he experienced, it was exactly the same that she had described, the same details. This person also described how these praying mantis talk with this weird clicking noise and also described how they move with very quick, sharp, jerky-like movements. So this was absolute confirmation to her that this experience was real. And that's where their encounters at this point stand. Again, they prefer to remain anonymous. I did cover their story in my book, Wondrous, 25 True UFO Encounters. It's one of my favorite encounters in this book. I've interviewed a lot of people who've had this experience, but uh, this mother-son duo really touched my heart. I've come to look at them as really good friends, and uh, I'm just really affected by their experience, and I think it's got some very interesting facets to it. It can show, again, how People don't realize their contactees their whole life. It's a very benevolent case. They have no real fear. I'm also struck by how psychic Anthony is. I expect he will be doing important work in his life. And I also found it very interesting that Nancy described being, not only seeing grays, but praying mantis as well, and seeing the interior of the room dressed up like a living room because this is something I have heard from other contactees and have read about in other cases. The ETs have a very advanced technology. They are able to do this to reduce the fear factor uh, of UFO witnesses. It's an amazing case, and I really want to thank Nancy and Anthony for sharing their story and uh, allowing me to tell other people about it. And uh, it's just... An amazing case, and that's why I wanted to share with you all today. I hope you found it interesting, and I want to thank you once again for watching. I truly appreciate it, and until next time, keep searching for answers, and more importantly, keep having fun.